Hi, and welcome back. So we've covered the real basics of the interface in Rhino, and now we're going to take a look at how to draw things with a little bit more precision. And keep in mind that what we're about to cover applies to virtually everything in this program, so it's, it's still kind of a generalization, but will help in the future. The first thing to note is that a lot of these uh, commands allow for um, numeric input in the command prompt. So I'm going to start by maximizing my top view and I'm going to start a polyline and as I start this command it's asking me to start it somewhere so I'm going to drop my first point somewhere here for instance. Now let's say that my next my next point needs to be 10 units away from the last one. Well I can do that quite simply by by entering 10 in the prompt up here and when I press enter it'll give me a preview of of a black line with uh, an extension that's white. Um, so the black line, the distance between the start and end of that black line, that's 10 units and um, you can sort of ignore that white line that's just a preview for the direction. So when I left click I've dropped that first line and that's now 10 units across and I can do this repeatedly for for all my next points so I'm gonna make the next one 12 and when I drop that that's a 12 unit long line when I'm done again I just right click to end that command so I have a 10 unit and a 12 unit long line now let's say that I want to I'm gonna just get rid of this let's say that I want to um, start a line and I want it to be uh, right at the intersection of this green and red line right here, right at that point. Maybe before I go on with that, I just want to briefly mention that this red line is the x-axis. And uh, you can see that at the bottom here it says x. So this is running as an x. And the value down here where it says world, you'll notice it has a value, x. So as I run along this axis, you'll notice that the x value is increasing and as I move back towards the intersection of the two lines that's zero right there and as I continue moving in this direction it's now a negative value so this is positive and negative and the same thing for the y so this is positive y this is negative y okay so I'm in my my polyline command and I want to drop a point to start right at zero well I could try and zoom in and uh, try and get as close as possible but that's really not a very efficient way to do it and chances are you're not going to get it at zero. We want to take advantage of CAD and the way we're going to do that is by entering a value here. So the start of the polyline if I just type zero and press enter that'll place my first input at zero and this is the same for virtually all commands. If you just type zero it'll place the placement at zero. So now I'm ready for my, for my next polyline and I can continue to place lines past that. As I mentioned before the shift key will constrain things so I can make sure that this is 90 degrees by just hitting the shift and then left clicking to add my next point and I can do that throughout this command wherever I need to. So that's one way to create uh, lines that are 90 degrees to each other if that's what you need to do. I'm going to just undo that and rerun the command and let's go ahead and this time instead of using the zero to place our, our, our starting point there we're going to turn on what's called snap and it's turned on now because it's bold so that's off that's on and what the snap does is it constrains the placement of the cursor to the grid so if I zoom in a little bit more you can probably see it better so I can only place my cursor wherever it's snapping now so if I left click to start there's my first point and um, let's say I want to create a box that is um, five units high so I'm, I can also pay attention to what's happening down here this is that value is the value from my last point so that's five high or I can just count one two three four five up and then one two three four five across let's say I wanted to make this ten I'd continue counting until I got to ten and five down and five across and you'll notice that it highlights point when I click that 
that's now sort of an enclosed rectangle. If I wanted to place my cursor somewhere off of the grid while I'm in that command, let's say I start my polyline here, and this is going to give, this is a value of three right here. Let's say I want three and a half. I can't choose that while I'm, at, while I'm on my snap. I could deselect the snap, which I just did, while I'm in the command and try and place it exactly where it needs to be. That's really not going to work though. So what I would do instead is type the value of my next distance, in this case 3.5. And when I press enter, that now previews a three and a half inch line, which again, it's off of the grid and that's what I wanted. So I'm now there and I'm still snapping so I can continue to place more lines on that grid if that's what I need to do. We're going to uh, just delete these two. And for doing rectangles, we certainly have a dedicated tool. Left click on this icon and start your origin point and then pull up to define the second corner of that rectangle. That's one way to create a rectangle. The other way to correct, uh, to create a rectangle rather is to, I'm going to restart that command. The first corner I'm just going to type zero because I want it to start at the origin. And now it's asking me for the other corner or length. And so let's say I want to make this rectangle uh, be, let's say 20 across. I can simply type 20 at the top and that will set my my uh, my length of the rectangle and now it's asking me for the width and I can specify what that width is again just by clicking and left left clicking to to end that command there or I could type a value in let's say 25 for instance and now that's a rectangle that's that's uh, 20 by 25 across just to take a look at some other basic drawing tools, let's try a circle for instance. So I'm going to start the circle command and it's asking me for the center of the circle. So I can place this center anywhere I want. Again, if, if I've already started using a grid and I were to come in here for instance and start the circle there, I know that that center is going to be um, uh, joined up with the corner of that rectangle. So I can pull out and define my circle that way. Uh, that's just a left click to end the command. I'm going to just undo that and restart that command and drop that at that point again. And this time, let's say I, I know that the diameter is going to be of a certain amount. Let's say it's got to be a 12 inch diameter. I would simply t type 12 and press enter and that would end the command with a 12 inch circle. What about uh, moving objects? Without the snap enabled, so I've just disabled it right now, if I wanted to move this circle over to this corner here, um, I could drag this circle and try and get it more or less lined up. Um, but again, that's going to be more or less. And maybe I, I want things to be actually bang on. So I'm going to just undo that move just control Z and instead instead of dragging I'm going to start something called move so starting the move command it asks me for the point to move from well I'm gonna turn on my snap and so now I'm, I'm snapping again to the grid and I'm gonna to snap to the same point that the center of the circle is at and I want to start the move from there and now I'm moving from the center of that circle and so when I drop that at the top of that rectangle, that's now centered around that corner because they're both sharing that same grid. So that's sort of in essence how, how you could move things precisely using the move command. In the next video, we're going to start taking a look at the object snaps because uh, this will really expand how we can move things around and we'll take a look at a couple of other drawing tools as well. Thanks.